Okay, so we just start sets by just going back to first year and reminding ourselves that equal sets, where a set of, of, of elements A equals a set of elements B, the sets are equal if they contain exactly the same elements. So here's the elements 1, 2, 3 in set A and 3, 2, 1 in set B. They're not in the same order, but they're exactly the same. They are equal sets. Okay, And then uh, if we remind ourselves of the union, of two sets A and B, so union A union B contains this union contains all the elements of A and B without any elements repeating. So if we have A one two three four, B three four five six, then A union B we always start by writing all the elements of A and then checking for any elements in B that we haven't included. So we we ignore the three and the four because that's here already and we include the 5 and 6. And that's, on a Venn diagram, that's what A union B actually looks like, all that shaded area. The intersection, A intersection B, then is uh, contains the set is contains a set of elements common to both sets. So A is 1, 2, and 3. B has the elements 2, 3, and 4. So A intersection B uh, is 1 in both. No, it's not. Is 2 in both? Yes, it is. Is 3 in both? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, is um, no, so that's it. So it's just two comma three. They're the elements of the set A intersection B, and it's that shaded area in the middle of the two sets uh, where they intersect, as it, as shown on a Venn diagram. Okay, uh, subsets subsets B uh, B subset C. Sorry, B sub B is a subset of A. Uh, if all the elements in B are contained in A. So if we just check up here. If A was equal to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and B is 3 and 5, then B contains 3 and 5, which are all part of the set A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So B is a subset of A. The universal set, then, U, is the set from which all other sets is being considered, and it's all those in there, and it's... Uh, the U stays outside the rectangle. Then the complement A colon. Just bear with me a second now. We'll get rid of some of this. The complement A, A complement, sorry, A complement here uh, is the set. Uh, the complement A complement is the set of elements in the universal set U, not in A. So if I have elements in A here, and I have the universal set here, then the complement of, of uh, A is everything else that's outside of A that's in U. So one way you could do is you could cover A, and that reveals all the rest, or you could add, actually divide the, uh, the elements of U divided by A, just as a way of viewing and crossing out. So if U, is, if U was equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and A was 3 and 4, if I was just to write uh, A complement equals, uh, you know, what's in U over A, so I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3 and 4 there, and I cross out my 3 and 4, I just have 1, 2, 5 on the top, and that's actually uh, the elements of A complement. It's just another way of crossing and dividing, I call it, just a little method you, you might use. Cardinal number then, uh, the, the, this symbol here, the number of elements in uh, the set A. So it's the number of elements in a set, basically, sorry. So if A equals this, there's four elements there. A cardinal number of A is, is four. Okay, now let's look at Venn diagrams uh, and where we have to kind of consider the cardinal numbers. So, for example, here we have uh, a question that says, Class of 30 pupils, 17 study German, 16 study Spanish, and 5 study both. Draw the Venn diagram. Okay, So the way we do this is we simply draw our German and our Spanish, and we know that 5 do both, so they must be in here at the intersection of German and Spanish. Okay, And then we want to, we want to kind of realise that in here... We have the people who only do German, and in here we have the people who only do Spanish, uh, because in here it's the people who do both. Okay, So to find uh, the number of people who only do German, it must be 17 minus uh, 5 is 12. And to find the number of people who only do, uh, who only do Spanish, it must be the 16 people who do Spanish, but you know five of them are doing German. Uh, 
two languages that do both. So it must be 11 that only do Spanish. Okay, So the number of people doing German is 12, Spanish is 11. And the number of people who do neither, well, we have to add up uh, A, or sorry, G uh, union, uh, all the contents of G union, S uh, and they are uh, 28, 12, 11, 5 is 28. Take that from the 30 students and we have two who are doing neither and they're represented out here. Okay, And I've just used it, I've just written in terms of hash, uh, sorry, cardinal numbers here, that the, the number of people only doing German is the number of people doing German minus the number of people uh, uh, the number minus the current number of the intersection of German and Spanish, and the number of people doing Spanish is the current number of the Spanish minus current number of G intersection S. Okay. Now let's consider set difference, which we did meet with briefly last year, but we'll meet with it properly now. Uh, set difference known as A less B or A less B the symbol there. Uh, A less B is the set of elements uh, in in A, which are not in B. So if I have if I've the set A and the set B, A less B, I put my thumb over B and it just reveals the shaded area, okay? Or I cover uh, set B. And uh, another way of finding uh, the elements in A less B is if you have A equals five, nine, th I call it cover and divide. So it's to find the actual elements listed uh, if, if we need to do that. But if I have a set A that has the elements 5, 9, 3, 6, and B has the elements 1, 2, 5, 6, 10, A less B, if I write A over B, what's in A over B, and I just cross out uh, what I can, what's above and below, whatever's left on top, that's A less B. And the same would work for B less A. Okay? Uh, in this case, B less A, if I cover A with my thumb, then whatever's in here, the shaded area, is B less A. Okay, now I have a bit here about the about the cardinal numbers, but we won't go there. I think don't worry about that. It's not really for this course. Now, let's look at the commutative uh, property or commutative property, and all it says is that that if I have set a and b, then you know a union b is the same as b union a. And A intersection B, you know, the elements that would be in that set, is the same as the set of elements that are in the set B intersection A. So it just means unions and intersections are equal to each other. Unions equal to union. And really what you might notice is the order doesn't matter. If A union B is the same as B union A, or A intersection B is the same as B intersection A. Okay, so here's an example. If A is 1, 2, 3, 4, B is 2 and 3, A intersection B is 2, 3, B intersection A is 2, 3, and that just shows you that uh, A intersection B is the same as B intersection A. And you can stop the video and work those out yourself if you want. Okay. And if A is 1, 2, 3, 4, and B is 3, 4, 5, let's look at A union B. So we write out a 1, 2, 3, 4, and we need to add on our 5. And B union A, uh, we write out our 3, 4, 5, and we add on our 1, 2. Uh, and let's see, A union B equals B union A, yes they are. But just notice and realise that uh, in terms of set difference, they're not com commutative in that A less B is not equal to B less A. To find A less B, if I just put contents of A over B and cross out what occurs, I get 1, 2 at the top. And to find B less A, if I write contents of B over A and just cross out my uh, 3 and my 4, uh, then I just whip 5 on top, and basically they're not equal to each other. A less B is not equal to B less A. So there, you know, even though, because I've swapped the order here, it does matter. They're not commutative. Commutative, sorry. So here's an example from the book, uh, page 36, question 6. So if we were to shade in A less B, it's that shaded area there, B less A is that shaded area, and U uh, less A intersection B, well you identify A intersection B, and U less all of that, this is as if I covered that to reveal everything else, okay?